This is the Bandai Wonder Swan, a Japanese exclusive handheld released in 1999 and discontinued in 2003. I bought this Wonder Swan on eBay for £15 as a spares and repairs. You can see that the screen lens, while it has some Digimon features present, most of it has now disappeared. We'll need to fix this. So let's turn on the device and see if it works. We insert the game and we turn on the device. When we insert the game, we can already see the issue. The game doesn't appear to boot. This is likely due to a dirty cartridge connector. And there's a screen issue, which is likely due to a polarizer filter now been burnt out, which we will need to replace. And here are the replacements we'll be using. A new polarizer filter and a new screen lens. I got both of these items from Z Labs, and I'll be providing a link to both items in the description section below. So let's get cracking and repair this Wonder Swap. So let's begin. We start by removing the game and the battery cover. There are six screws holding the rear shell. We need to slowly unscrew them and remove the rear shell. Be careful when unscrewing as the plastic is quite brittle on the Wonder Swan. And now we can pop off the rear shell which exposes the main board. So let's talk about what powers the Wonder Swan. This is the CPU, codenamed as one. It is the NEC V30MZ and it's a low voltage version of the same CPU used in a number of devices, for example, the NEC PC 9801 VM and the Acorn Pocket Book. This one is clocked at 3.072 megahertz. The AS1 also has 16 kilobytes of on-chip SRAM. The Wonder Swan was capable of displaying up to eight shades of gray. In contrast to its main competitor, the Game Boy, which was only able to display four shades of gray. We disconnect the LCD ribbon cable by carefully popping open the black retaining clips, which will free the cable. We slowly lift up the main board, remove the membranes and the buttons. As you can see, some of the plastic from the screw hole has broken off. Unfortunately, this is expected with old plastics on consoles and handhelds. To remove the LCD screen, I'm going to use this Jimmy knife from iFixit. I lightly pry up with the Jimmy knife from the edges until the adhesive releases it. And as you can see, the screen is in much need of a new filter. Using the Jimmy knife again, I carefully and not forcefully use the knife to peel the burned polarizer filter from the edge of the screen and work my way across and down with a knife to peel the filter off slowly. Peeling away the filter can leave a mess of dried residue, but this can be cleaned up using IPA. Sometimes after the cleaning screen, you may see an additional filter still attached, which would also need to be removed. So I peeled away the last filter, cleaned up the screen, and this is the final result. Applying pressure on the screen lens pops it out without any issues. To clean the residue on the front plastic shell, I apply IPA, which removes it perfectly, leaving a clean surface for the new screen lens. I then turn my attention to the main board, cleaning the cartridge connector, cleaning the speaker, and cleaning the main board. We now turn our attention to the brand new polarizing filter that I will fit on the screen. So I align the filter with the screen to get a perfect measurement of 
exactly how big the polarizer filter has to be to be placed on the screen. Once I get a perfect measurement, I remove the protective film and place the new polarizer filter over the screen. So now it's reassembly time. So I put the screen, the buttons, the rubber membranes all back in their original position. And now for that final and all important moment, putting this new screen lens on the Wonder Swan. And here is the final result, showing the brand new, amazing looking screen lens. The polarizer filter looks absolutely fantastic, showing the game in its full detail. It's been an amazing project to work on, bringing back this Inan gem to its full glory. Thank you so much everyone for watching this video and I hope you've enjoyed it and until next time, bye for now.